No doubt Donald Trump and Joe Biden are the two most debated and controversial presidents we've ever had. That's no secret. Now, American economic pessimism has been in a crazy persistency despite major indicators showing that the economy is actually strong. Unemployment's low. Inflation is significantly down from its 2022 peak. Wages are higher. The stock market keeps hitting new highs. And it looks like the Federal Reserve might be able to keep the U.S. out of a recession. We'll see about that. Surveys are beginning to capture growing consumer confidence. But for President Joe Biden, the question is whether it's rising quickly enough for him to avoid being penalized in the 2024 election. He had no control over the pandemic rattled economy that he inherited from Donald Trump. But voters may nevertheless blame him for it. And they have rightly or wrongly blamed the presidents for the country's economic troubles in the past. We all know that. We do that. We love to point fingers. That's what we do as Americans. Now, voters have mentioned economic issues. Think about stuff like inflation, jobs, and more as their greatest concern since 2022 in a long-running and ongoing Gallup survey. Another survey by February Morning and Bloomberg surveyed voters in swing states, also found that the economy is the most important issue and could therefore decide the outcome of the entire election. Recent polls show Trump with an 11 to 20 point edge over Biden at the current point on which candidate would be better to handle the economy going forward. In some ways, this isn't really a surprise. The economy was generally pretty good under President Trump, except for the COVID-induced recession under Biden. High inflation has been the biggest economic story. We can't get away from it. If Biden is to turn his fortunes around, he'll have to convince the American public that the economy is in fact in a better place than it feels and will continue to improve along the way, and that it's better than they remember under Donald Trump. Now, here's a quote from GOP pollster Wick Ayers. The fundamental problem for Biden and the Democrats is that while the rate of inflation is down, it's not going backwards. And I continue to quote, it's hard to persuade people that things are actually better. Okay, unquote. The fact remains that Americans think the economy is worse under Joe Biden, and Americans have been stubbornly downbeat about the economy under Joe Biden. With Gallup's economic confidence index hovering between negative 20 and negative 40 for months on a scale of negative 100 to 100. That number is derived from monthly surveys of U.S. adults in which they are asked to rate national economic conditions, with 100 signifying that all respondents say the economy is excellent or good and that it is getting better, and 100 signifying that they say it's poor and getting worse. Again, that's according to the Gallup poll. Now, let me talk about these charts I promised. Let's look at chart number one. Here, the data suggests that the more economic confidence has plummeted, the more the economy has become an issue in the presidential race. About 30% of Americans cited the economy as the most important problem facing the country in the most recent results from Gallup's running survey. Although it's worth noting that immigration is now climbing very fast on this chart. Now let's take a look at the second chart. Looking here, there's some evidence that link between the economy and president's approval might be weakening as partisan loyalty shift, but it doesn't appear to be gone entire. It does seem like things might be finally turning a corner for Biden. Surveys, including Gallup's, have shown a marked uptick in economic confidence in recent months, even if the figures are still overall well below what Biden would like to see. Now let's talk about the Biden and Trump economies. They were both pretty good, but only one president has really gotten credit so far. And there's no denying that the economy was good under Trump, and the 2019 pre-pandemic economy is now seen as basically the baseline that we pit everything Joe Biden does in Joe Biden's economy. We judge Joe Biden's results based on the 2019 levels that we all lived at and remember. But Trump arrived in office when the economy was already going pretty strong, just to be totally honest. He was sort of just riding on the coattails of a 10-year-long economic recovery. That's a quote from Ali R. Bustamante, Deputy Director of Worker Power and Economic Security at Roosevelt Forward, the progressive political arm of the Roosevelt Institute. Try saying that really fast. The economy continued to grow modestly under his watch until the pandemic hit, and then 2020 hit, and after that, his stimulus checks kept it buoyant for quite a while. The stock market saw significant growth under Trump, and at least for the last year, under Biden too, and more on that later. But some of Trump's signature economic policies have also been found to have had little to no measurable effect on the economy, and a few might have even hurt the economy. Multiple studies have shown that the Trump tariffs at best had a neutral effect on the economy, and at worst cost America hundreds of thousands of jobs and higher prices for its consumers. After his 2017 tax cuts, which increased investment in the economy and contributed to modest wage growth in the short term, fell far from short of Republicans' promise that they would pay for themselves and projected to significantly raise federal debt and increase income inequality. Now, Joe Biden, on the other hand, faced the immediate task upon assuming office 
and heading off a recession as the country started to bounce back from the pandemic. The U.S. did recover from that pandemic economic slump, but there is evidence that his policies, including the stimulus checks that he issued, contributed to an inflationary spiral. To me, it's obvious. Inflation not a control when these checks started getting cut for everybody. Now, the U.S. did, however, manage to curb inflation faster than other economically developed countries, while also maintaining much lower levels of unemployment and higher wage growth. The Federal Reserve might deserve most of the credit for that, given its carefully timed interest rate hikes. But Biden, to be fair, also has a very successful legislative record, including the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the CHIPS Act, laws that experts say can bolster the economy. And he took steps to reduce pandemic-induced pressure on supply chains, making it easier for truck drivers to become licensed and allowing some major ports to operate nonstop. Now, I've got another chart for you. This is the third chart I'd like to show you. Now, this one shows that the U.S. economy is growing faster than projected, driven largely by consumer spending and the Federal Reserve's successful efforts to get inflation under control without triggering a recession. And I'm going to touch on both those talking points later in this video. While inflation has come down substantially from its 9.1% peak in June of 2022, it still remains well above the Fed's target rate and ongoing progress toward our 2% inflation objective is not assured. That's a quote from Jerome Powell, who I talked about in my last video as well. In February, Inflation was higher than economists projected at 3.2%, which further adds to the uncertainty we're in right now. But Americans' wagers are now growing faster than inflation, which should relieve a little bit of the pressure of the higher prices out there. But the problem, for Joe Biden in particular, is that the memory of peak inflation is still fresh in everybody's mind. We talk about it every week on this channel. And not everyone has experienced the wage growth in an equal manner. Bustamante said that younger workers and lower earners account for the lion's share of wage growth in the current economy. So you got people on the lower edge of the wage scale tripping up, but people in the middle of the pack, not so much. Now, this next chart shows that wages are catching up with inflation. My take on this is basically what is working is Joe Biden's strategy on jobs. Unemployment reached its lowest level since 1969 under Biden, and the U.S. gained a record 7.27 million new jobs in 2021, fueled by recovering the labor market as vaccines became available and the country opened up. Job creation has remained strong in the years since, but slowed to 2.7 million jobs added in 2023. So big difference there in a couple of years. But don't forget this tidbit, something I read and do many, many times. There's a larger separation right now between rich and poor. Many people are working more than one job. So I have to take this data with a grain of salt. You should too. The stock market's also been setting new record highs after growing a whopping 24% last year, which was driven by optimism that the Fed will soon cut rates and that companies in the tech and energy sectors have outperformed their expectations. Now, this means that Trump no longer has the only claim to a strong stock market during the last few years, but instead, he's had to resort to claiming credit, kind of unconvincingly, for the current market. For instance, he recently posted on True Social that the U.S. was experiencing, and I quote, a Trump stock market. This is in anticipation of him winning the election in 2024, so we'll see what happens there. Now, chart six speaks to the point we reached with the stock market, okay? So Biden's challenge is speaking to Americans who are still hurting. The picture of the economy isn't entirely rosy. We talk about that all the time on this channel, you guys. We keep harping on it. It's not rosy. After a brief spike in savings rates during the pandemic due to a series of stimulus checks, hopefully you guys got one, Americans are now saving less than they were pre-pandemic. That's a fact. There's a few reasons for this, of course. Number one, everything costs more. Like, what doesn't cost more in this society? But interest rates are also higher, meaning that it's now more expensive to borrow. And higher borrowing costs have eaten into American savings. Here's a chart showing that fact. Now, in spite of all this, Americans are still buying stuff in droves and not just necessities, restaurants, airlines, hotels, all things that have surged in prices have been some of the biggest beneficiaries to people spending. Now, there's a question. How long can this last? When will the money dry up? When will people become poor and realize they can't do trips, restaurants, fine dining, etc.? Americans are pulling from their now depleted savings and amassing record high debt on credit cards and other revolving plans in which consumers can repeatedly borrow money to a set limit and repay in installments. Young adults in particular, many of whom are struggling with high student loan debt, are increasingly falling behind on their credit card payments. At some point, something has to give. This is just gonna happen. We talk about the credit card debt all the time. It's crazy. There might be a reason that many Americans still yearn for the economy of 2019 when they had more cash on hand and didn't have to resort to putting purchases on a credit card. I remember those days. I miss those days. Now still, Bustamante, who I mentioned earlier, is not too worried about the long-term economic impacts given that the Fed is expected to cut interest rates again this year, which should provide relief to households carrying large balances and making it a little bit easier to pay off that debt. But if the Fed waits much longer, Americans might not feel the effects before the November election. So there's in key months coming up right here, right in front of us. 
Now this file chart I'm showing right now speaks to something I've been touching on in past videos. And to me, it's the biggest concern for America. I just talked about it, credit card debt. It's getting out of control. This leads me to believe that we are about to collapse. We might not do a full recession, but things are gonna go south. We can't keep getting these stock market highs. It's not gonna happen. So while most of the economic indicators spelled good news for Joe Biden in America, the question is whether he could persuade voters who feel otherwise and remain nostalgic for Trump's economy. I'd love to get your comments in the section below. I know this is a very highly debated topic. We got Trump and Biden. You either love one or hate one or vice versa, both. You know, there's really no middle ground here. This is like the bloods and the crypts all over again back in the early 90s. These guys are like rock'em sock'em robots right here. I mean, you either are on one side or the other. There's really no middle ground. So I'd like your thoughts below. Which economy was better? Who deserves credit? And where are we going? Greg and I will continue to update you on where we think we are going, and I don't think it's a good place in upcoming videos. So please subscribe and consider joining our newsletter, tageconomy.org. We keep you updated on what's going on in the economy without any fluff, without any media agenda. Just Greg and I, two small business owners with families. I'll catch you in the next video.